This is the Cane Springs Northeast Quadrangle, this topographic map here. Uh, where I am right now, I'm in this area of sand dunes here. I found these sand dunes just looking at the map. Notice this road here. This comes in off of Highway 86. I'm just on the west side of the Salton Sea. And right where the road makes a bend here to the northeast, you run into some sand dunes on the road. And it's a really beautiful area with all these sand dunes piled up all over the place. So we're going to go for a hike. Notice the sand drifts here that are covering the road. These, of course, are ripples. These are sand ripples. They generally have a uh, wavelength of a couple of inches, two, three inches, and a wave height of just a fraction of an inch. And these are the smallest wind-blown land features, or landforms that you see. What you see here is a Barkin Dune. And we're going to go take a little hike on the Barkin Dune. And measure the uh, slip face. You're looking at the edge of the dune here. On the top is the uh, slope up which the uh, sand travels, the wind-blown sand, and then it cascades down what's known as the slip face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the slope of the uh, slip face here. Now, if you read any geologic or geography textbook and they discuss sand dunes, they tell you that uh, the angle of repose for uh, sand is thir about 34 degrees or so, 34, 35 degrees. So here you have the slip face of the sand dune, and I'm going to measure it with my Brunton compass here. We have a uh, long level here that measures uh, angle. I'm going to place it here about congruent with the slope and move it until oh, yeah, move it upside down here. Move the long level until it's uh, until it's level. Okay. And there you can see my Brunton campus or maybe it's difficult for you to read but it it does say about 30, 33 degrees, okay? So that's about right. This particular dune field probably formed from sands that were left over when ancient Lake Cahuilla uh, dried up. Ancient Lake Cahuilla was uh, present here in the Salton uh, Basin um, thousands of years ago, well, at least centuries ago. And the Salton Trough here, which is below sea level, it's a topographic region that's down below sea level. Um, periodically, the, the Colorado River, which is to the east of where I'm where I'm at here, uh, used to change course and flow here into the uh, basin here, into the sink, this depression that's down below sea level. And actually, some people say there are marine deposits down below here, and it was an arm of the uh, Gulf of California, also known as the Sea of Cortez which is that long, skinny uh, body of water between Baja California and then mainland Mexico, right? So anyway, you know, there used to be a lake here, and then it dried up, and when it dried up, there's all this loose sand laying around on the, on the old lake floor, and, you know, the wind picked it up and blew it around, so, and this is one result. You've got these, this sort of little collection of sand, wind-blown sand. Another interesting feature here as I walk around these dunes, in between the dunes you see some what I would call lag gravels. 
and these are probably were deposited by running water at some point in time running across the surface of the desert and now what's going on all this windblown sand is is acting being as the wind picks it up it hurls against these these uh, gravels here and these are becoming ventifacts in other words they're being shaped by <clears throat> windblown sand as the wind hurls the sand against the rock it sort of carves it etches the surface and depending on the varying hardness of the rock itself you get all these weird forms okay this is this is pretty cool <coughs> they're just all over the place here here's another one ventifact all this etching here on the, this is it looks like a piece of sandstone or mudstone and uh, okay this area has some individual dunes that are full-fledged barkin dunes but in between the, the the large dunes you have this sort of uh, windblown sand surface uh, what you might, might call a sand sheet and you have these little hummocks that of windblown sand that are piled up wherever there's a, a vegetation there you have some old fence posts this land here used to be uh, military land. It's some decommissioned military land. And I can see there's fencing here laying in the sand. And so this is left over. And notice the, uh, the level of the concrete here into which these posts are set. This is probably the amount of uh, sand that's been deflated. In other words, picked up by the wind and carried away since, these, uh, since this fence was set. Here's the old fence laying underneath the, the sand. Just poking out of the sand here. This hill you see is the, uh, this is a pretty good sized Barkin dune. I'm going to hike up on top of it. This is the slip face of this dune. These wrinkles you see are what are known as uh, avalanche deposits. Okay, so the, the dune moves in this direction and the sand will travel up the back side of the dune and fall down the front slip face but sometimes it will become over steepened and also cascade down the front. This is the horn of the Barkin dune. This is one horn. Okay, this is the crest of the dune. This is the highest point on this dune. Looking to the north here, you're looking at the Stoss side, S-T-O-S-S, -S -S, the Stoss side of the dune. This is the part of the dune up which windblown sand travels. Dunes usually form where uh, there's an obstruction of some kind. Uh, the sand starts to pile up over time. And off in the distance I can see a whole collection of bark and dunes all together. Boy, if I had more time, I'd hike out there. We'll have to come back someday. Here I am. I'm at the brink of the dune. In other words, this is where the, the windblown sand uh, falls over the slip face. Looking to the east here at the uh, one of the horns of this bark and dune. And I'm going to pan around. And you can see the slip face below me. And over to the west is the other horn of this dune. Off in the distance you can see the Salton Sea. We're going to have to come back and visit these dunes again. This is also a hotbed of Border Patrol agents. They like to come back this road here and uh, they gave me a hassle last night. They thought maybe I was a smuggler. <laughs> I don't know. I guess if I was a smuggler I'd make more money than I do teaching. Anyway. But I don't think I'm going to go in this smuggling. All right.